Hello again. Hi. Hey, Lynn and I are here. It's a nice sunny day in the south, and um, we're enjoying the heat. Hope you <laughs> are, too. You know, I heard that Alaska hit 90 degrees the other day. Really? Anchorage, Alaska. Ooh. And I, it wow. was like an... It was an all-time high. Yes, it was. Yeah. I know. Can you imagine that? Not so in Alaska, goodness, that's, that's <laughs> I hot. I know. <laughs> Sixty-five in Alaska is hot. So, yeah. anyhow, well, I wanted to share something with you today that um, the Lord spoke to me recently, and you know, in this I saw like a uh, uh, kind of a round table of. It was actually only women that were gathered there, but uh, each one was asked, and I thought it was the Lord asking this, um, they were told to introduce themselves and tell who they were, okay? And so each lady, there's like eight ladies there, and each one gave their name and their title. One was a, a, an author, she wrote children's books, and I thought, man, I wanna get to know her because that intrigued me. And when it came to me, all I said was, uh, my name is Bonnie Jones, and I woke up. Okay, <laughs> I was disappointed. I wanted to hear what I did. But this is what the Lord spoke. What you are is what you produce. Who are you? And I thought, my goodness, now that's interesting. So, but how true it is, you know, what you are mm -hmm. is what you produce. I think of Bob in, in his life, you know, he was a prophet. Did he produce other prophets? Uh, some, you know, he mentored many, many, many people. And, um, but he basically was raising up the body of Christ. He put a lot of work into leaders, and some of them were prophets, some were apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists. So, I mean, he really uh, worked as a steward of the fivefold and with the gifts. So, you know, what he was is what he produced. You know, he was a servant to God and he was definitely a prophet. Uh, he set the body in motion, you know, into their uh, callings. Yeah. And um, so, but you know, you can look at your own life, what, what you are is what you produce. You know, if you're, um, if you're a teacher, let's say, I'm gonna say a school teacher, you're teaching children, you're producing literate children, students, okay? You know, if um, you're an evangelist, you're probably, your gifting is being imparted to other people. You know, not every person that Bob prophesied to was a prophet, but he was releasing that gift of prophecy and mm -hmm. releasing them into their anointing, their calling. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're uh, a thief, you're <laughs> probably producing other little thieves, you know, mm -hmm. because it's people that follow you, they're following you for a certain reason. Mm -hmm. So um, I was looking at names and different names in the Bible. See, we name our children with the hope that they grow up into the name that you've called them to, okay? Yeah. Uh, now, I can honestly say I did not name you <laughs> that way. I didn't, but I see, you know, a lot of people are doing that today, and I, I think that's great, and they probably did right along. But back in the Bible is what they did. They named their child, uh, you know, and expected mm -hmm. their child to grow into that calling. Um, Eve, we'll just look at a couple people. Eve... Actually, it says Adam named her, but I think it was God-inspired. She would be the mother of all living. Um, Abram, okay, his father named him Abram, but God changed his name to Abraham, which would be the father of many nations, okay? Sarai, her name meant princess, princess among her people, but God changed her name to be Sarah, princess to the nations okay now I gotta stop there for a minute because back in January of 2005 which was prior to me meeting mm -hmm. Bob um, the Lord told me he said this year I changed your name to Sarah 
course, when I told Bob, he said, yep, that's right. You're a Sarah, all right. You have to be 50 years old to be a Sarah. <laughs> I think maybe he meant 90, but he said you have to be 50 to be a Sarah. But see, God was, God was renaming me from Bonnie, okay, which means beautiful, and of course I am. But from that to Sarah, so I would be a princess to the nations. Mm -hmm. And as I came into fellowship then with Bob and, and you know, can truly like minister to the nations, so God was naming me. Um, okay, now Jacob, he was named Jacob, which meant supplanter, but God changed him, his name, to Israel, which meant contender with God. For all you have contended and have power with God and with men and have prevailed. That's what his name meant. So when God, we name our children and we have the hope that they grow up into that name and yeah. fulfill, you know, what is one of your children's names? They, they have really neat names for oh, their yeah. children. Well, well, our firstborn is Olivia Eden. Yeah. And uh, we named her after the two, two gardens in the Bible, Garden of Olives and Garden of Eden. Yeah. So one... Eden is where the promises were made, and uh, the Garden of Olives is where it was like fulfilled. Yeah. So now, will she walk out what you intended her to in her name? We don't know. I think God has a mm -hmm. special name, you know, for mm -hmm. each of us. And so if He changes our name, yeah. I mean, I don't go around saying my name is Sarah, but. Yeah. In the spirit, I'm a, I'm a Sarah. Okay. Um, okay. God, see, we, God has the power and authority to cause people to become what he names them. Yeah. We don't. Right. We just have hope. Okay. And, um, but their name is their destiny. So that is what you are, you know. This is what you release to others. So, uh, like, Jacob, he contended with God, right? He wrestled with God and he prevailed. Mm -hmm. So, God then named him Israel, right? Yeah. So, and I feel that's what he was able to release, you know, into the other generations. So, um, so their name is their destiny. Now, God, why he can do this, he has always existed. He's all-powerful, right? He can release to us whatever he, whatever he chooses. He doesn't change. People change their mind during unforeseen circumstances, okay? I might start down the path and decide, this is too tough, I'm giving up. I'm going to work at Walmart, you know. <laughs> I almost did that the other day. Then I got stuck in line at Walmart, and I'm going, this is not for me. So, <laughs> But, you know, God doesn't do that. He never changes. What he's called us to be is he's going to keep making that provision for us, making that way possible until yeah. we agree with him. That's all he wants us to do is just agree with him, walk in alignment with him, and we'll walk out our purpose in him. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to conform to his way not try to get him to conform to our way that's tough I think sometimes that's what we're always trying to do is just get him to conform to our way mm -hmm. and uh, you know his thoughts, his way, his will is perfect you know mine pretty much is not the best <laughs> I like to think it is but it really isn't but um, so who are you? You know, you will release to the rest of the world, those you touch anyhow, by what you are. What you become is what you'll release to others. So Lynn's a guitarist. Yeah. Okay. He's a speaker. He's an author. He's a guitarist. You know, he's many things. And... He can, especially with his children, he can release those things to them and then to the people around you. You know, it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit that we should be releasing to others. Yeah. Okay? 
And um, do you have something you want to add to that? Look, this is just thinking. Yes, yeah, thinking my mode. thinking, my thinking phase here. Um, well, I think I, I've said that it said something like this in the last uh, the last video. It it was basically. Um, you know, as as God reveals Himself to you, you you're able to basically come in agreement with Him. So, um, I think sometimes He He'll reveal Himself to you, and we don't we don't recognize it. We'd be like the Pharisees or whatever. Like that can't be God because He's He doesn't do that. Well, mm -hmm. He just hadn't revealed Himself to you like that before. But now is your opportunity to agree with him. Um, you know, sometimes when he reveals himself, you, you need to kind of mull it over a little bit to, to make sure that that is God, that, that's, you know, that lines up and, and, it, and it's what he is doing. And sometimes you know right away, you can, you can quickly agree, yeah, I really like the time set that I can quickly agree with God and, and move forward but um, I appreciate that he get, he gives us time to be able to to work things out and and come into agreement with him mm -hmm. but you know that's all part of that relationship that we have with him and um, yeah it, it, it is an identity change or a, a shift in our in who we are uh, because we're becoming a new creation, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's sometimes a bit of a rocky uh, transformation, but um, it's always, 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 always. If we're if we're agreeing with God, it's always going to be better. It's all even if it doesn't look like it to start with, it's always going to be better because. He is working on our behalf, for our behalf, to to agree with Him and to and to come into uh, into a pure relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what? If um, I think a lot of it has to also do with our spoken word. You know, yeah. Like what we believe in our heart, we're going to say out of our mouth. Yeah. And if if we're walking in love and joy and peace and patience, if we're walking in the fruit of the Spirit, then what we have become, you know, is what we produce. You know, if you're always walking around with a long face and just grumble, 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 well, that's what you're going to release, and that's what you're going to, like, if you're doing that with your kids, that's the way they're going to grow up, is to have a, a mm -hmm. bad attitude, looking down on life at everything, or you can look at every situation and see see Christ in that situation. You know, we should be, if Christians, if you're Christian, you should be walking through life with him and see every situation from his point of view. So yeah. then what are you releasing? What are you producing? Okay, are you producing the fruit of the Spirit or, you know, the fruit from the enemy side, you know, just which is basically the opposite of love, joy, peace, patience, you know, so, uh, and what you, like I said, what you say, you know, you will reap a harvest of the word that you sow, you know, so if you're speaking doom and gloom and sickness and, you know, if you wake up, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> I feel so bad, I should have just, I could die, I feel so bad I could just die. Well, you know, you're speaking death over yourself. Praise the Lord, I'm awake. Look at this. This is an awesome day in the Lord. Hmm. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. What if all yeah. you could do is move your little toe, you know? But at least you had that little toe. Yeah. Right? So a lot of it's in your attitude, and what you say is what you will do. So I just say, you know, Lord, let us all just... Um, Revisit our attitudes and align them with your heart, with your mind, your thoughts, your spirit. And um, we want to reproduce you as you live within us. Let us, yeah. let us flow. Let us let 
let our spirit flow from that point and, and reproduce to others so that um, when people see us, they will know that it's you flowing through us and um, that we will be the person. We just receive the new name. Look forward to the new name that the Lord is going to give you because I mm -hmm. do believe he's giving us new identification, a new name. And, um, and it's what he's called you to. And he will continue to conform you if you are willing. You know, and the quicker yeah. you do it, the less time it's going to take. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, walk into that newness, that new name that he's given you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.